From antiquity to the future, and sometimes in a world of its own, city builders are perfect not only for efficiency enthusiasts, but also creative construction. Hello, my name's Gamerzak, and welcome to my 24 upcoming PC city building games in 2020 and 2021 list. Now, the past few years we've seen innovation in the genre, and there's a lot of new ideas, some more successful than others. We'll be having a look at what cityscape is on the horizon and trying to see which you'd prefer to call home. If you appreciate what you see here, please do like, subscribe, and share the video with your city building friends, as it really does keep this channel standing and these videos being made. Alright, now let's get started. Beginning in history, we have Aztec Empire by Growing Seeds. Said to be inspired by classics like Caesar III, Pharaoh, and Anno, this is a city-building simulation game set around the Aztec civilization. Housing levels, resource production chains, monuments, and gods are all going to be a part of your city's development and challenges. It also uses the classic walker system from the old Impressions games, which I know many are wanting but can be frustrating to those unfamiliar. Developed by a two-person team, this is an indie title that could take some time to be fully realized, but so far it looks to be able to evoke its own style and charm, which is nice. Though it might not satisfy you if you're looking for a AAA experience. If you're interested in something with a classic feel, they're aiming for a 2020 release, so maybe you'll see if Aztec Empire will be for you relatively soon. Speaking of Caesar, it's Roman's Age of Caesar by Firefly Studios. From the creators of Stronghold, this one has Caesar 2 vibes and is meant to be a kind of spiritual successor to the old Impression series. The difference, though, is that this is a multiplayer MMO grand strategy cooperative city builder. Starting out, you'll be trading, building, and fighting barbarians with other players as you manage your own district in a city. Meanwhile, there's a political layer where you can use diplomacy or force to rise to the top of the Senate. Something combining the promise of classic city building and grand strategy can be cool, but this is designed from the start to be cross-platform between mobile and PC. So as always, there's the concern that this is going to be too much like a freemium or overly simplified mobile game. And it is free to play, which is a concern for some too, as it is a time of over monetization. Having played some, it's definitely not for everyone, as it's got some mobile elements like wait times and clicking to collect resources. But it is free, so you can try Roman's Age of Caesar and decide for yourself when it's available. And then we have Builders of Egypt by Strategy Labs. It used to be called Hard Ancient Life, but this is an economic city builder taking place in the Nile Valley. This is clearly inspired by the old Pharaoh game, but it's trying to modernize it a bit. Starting in the proto-dynastic period, you'll be able to play through the birth of the old kingdom up until the death of Cleopatra. Diplomacy, politics, and choices are part of the gameplay in terms of trading partners and the obedience of other rulers. So trade and militaristic war can't be ignored. There's also religion and monuments, which of course there are in an ancient Egypt city building game. Gameplay footage so far looks a little rough, but it has been significantly improved over the last year. The most recent trailer convincing many to start watching the development of this one. No fixed release date yet, but if you like what you see, you might want to keep an eye on Builders of Egypt. For something a little bit older in more ways than one, it's Ancient Cities by Uncasual Games. Set through the Neolithic revolution of ancient humans, you start as a nomadic tribe and build up to be a fantastic settled city in antiquity. Gather resources, discover technologies, build wonders, and survive the elements and your enemies. There's a lot of simulation going on here in terms of nature, including seeds spread from trees and animal migrations. Your citizens are individually simulated too, and there will be social structures like politics, religion, and family. This is one that a lot of people like, and we've been watching it for a while, since it got funded on Kickstarter back in 2017. Originally intending to release in 2018, they pushed it back to 2019, and it looks like it's going to be pushed back again. Knowing that, we're not going to be able to guess when the release date is actually going to be, so we'll just have to wait and see if they can finish Ancient Cities over the next year or so. Staying in the Neolithic Age, it's Neolithic by Alex T. Harvey. 
Inspired by Age of Empires, Civilization and Caesar 3, this is a combination of city building and strategy where you develop an ancient civilization through the Neolithic to Late Bronze Age. Building from village to city, surviving the world and dominating the land. Your villagers have needs, they gain skills, and they'll inherit traits as they craft, build, and organize. It was kickstarted back in 2017 and was meant to become playable by now, but as a solo developer, things can only go so fast. Going through more testing phases towards the end of 2019, we could expect an early access release on Steam sometime in 2020, but indie developments could always face delays as usual. So hopefully it's not too much longer before we can play Neolithic. Next up we've got Foundation by Polymorph Games. A game that's been in early access for a while, this has actually taken great strides over the last year in terms of development. It's a gridless medieval city builder where you can have modular construction allowing you to design as big or small as you like and it has gameplay effects, which is pretty cool because you could build a small chapel to a monumental cathedral using the same tools. Resource management is inspired by Anno and city building takes notes from other classics such as The Settlers, Pharaoh and Sim City to create a complex ant farm like simulation. Although it originally released rough and very unfinished, the game was fun and engaging even back then. And now it's added a lot more gameplay, graphical improvements, along with things like weather and working towards military. The original early access period for Foundation on Steam is meant to end in 2020 for a full release, so hopefully things work out and we can get a complete experience over the next year. On the smaller side, we have a Microtown by Snowy Ash Games, a little pixel art town building game that's about relaxing village construction and management. Looking to have campaigns and scenarios, production chains, villager needs, government policies and trading, if it manages to deliver on all of that, this could be a deeper experience than expected. It's a bit like The Settlers, but less of the expansion focus and more on just the building of your town, which could be a nice chill experience for those looking for something like this. Although I know some of you just don't like pixel art, the style here is nice with good use of colors and okay design, and more improvements to the graphics are planned. Obviously, for a more niche audience, this could be worth checking out for the retro feel, and I think Microtown brings its own flavor to the genre. It's an early access now aiming for a 2020 release, so you can go have a closer look at those pixels. And then for one that has a lot of promise and we've been watching for a while, it's Emir by Raunchy Pork. A world of pigs who progress through civilization. This is a survival city building 4x MMO where you develop a village into a city by collecting resources, managing policies, discovering technologies, trading in a realistic economy, dealing with politics, raising an army and conquering the world. There can be a hundred other players on a single server, so things can get competitive. But you can also host your own servers for smaller groups or just by yourself if you'd prefer to play alone. There are still barbarians though. This is one we've been keeping an eye on for a few years. It's made a lot of progress with gameplay enhancements, UI improvements, bug fixes, persistent multiplayer servers, and more. It entered early access in 2019 on Steam and now has mostly positive reviews, so it's being taken well and the frequent updates are helping it get along. It's still mostly a solo dev though, so final release is a bit hard to call for Emir. And then for something that's a bit more on the adventure side, it's Dwaros by Lithic Entertainment. Part adventure, part town builder. This charming looking game lets you explore the world as characters to quest, solve puzzles, befriend animals, and collect resources. Meanwhile, you'll be building up your town, discovering new blueprints, and fulfilling the needs of your townsfolk. This is a smaller production, having raised about 15,000 Canadian dollars on Kickstarter in 2016, and it's been a while since, with a proper update every few months. I know that this might not be considered a city builder in the traditional sense, but the main focus is still to build the town, so there are plenty watching this list who would want to see it. It seems like fun for a niche audience, and by the looks of things, it'll be shaping up over the next year or two. But it's hard to be sure when exactly Juaros will release considering its slow development. Moving on, we have Distant Kingdoms by Orthrus Studios. 
blending city building, social management, exploration and adventure gameplay, this is a fantasy world with humans, elves, dwarves and orcs where you build a network of towns and villages as you provide for people's needs. There's a campaign across maps, you can create a tabletop like RPG party to go on quests and it's meant to be easy for beginners to pick up while maintaining a level of complexity for veterans. Modability is a big point too. It generally looks decent and sounds like it's got a lot of unique things it's bringing to the city building genre, which is interesting, but the risk is it stretches too thin between city builder and RPG. It would be nice if it worked out though. Building towards a 2020 release, distant kingdoms shouldn't be all that far away. And then we have the simply titled Build by Moonbear. What started as a mobile game called Pocket Build, this is a relaxing, low-poly town builder where you can collect resources, design your town, explore it in first person, and there's even going to be a zombie survival mode. It's pretty freeform, allowing you to overlap the placement of things and having modular construction be a big point. So it's great for the artistic ones out there who want to make things pretty. 600 plus items and various styles like modern, fantasy and even goblin. You can make what you want as long as you like vibrant colors and the low poly style. Though it's one of those zen games with no major objectives and it's pretty much a sandbox. Something that might make build, that's looking at an early 2020 release, feel a bit too shallow for the more experienced city builder. In a darker world, it's Dream Engines, Nomad Cities by Suncrash. Looking like it's inspired by They Are Billions, but in a more science fantasy post-apocalypse setting, this is a survival city builder with less focus on military and more focus on building a city that can take flight and relocate. Build up and survive in a location until you feel it gets too much, at which point you have to decide whether to stand your ground or move on. Production lines on scarce resources, exploration of the world, disposable infrastructure, and management of your city's weight and fuel are part of the gameplay. It's interesting to see this one, kind of like Mortal Engines the game, but the cities can fly, and it could be a hit if it manages to make things challenging, engaging, and fun, as it's important for something like this to not rely too much on the theme alone. No fixed date for release yet, but Dream Engine's Nomad Cities will be coming to early access first, at which point you can see if it flies or not. Speaking of floating cities, there's Airborne Kingdom by The Wandering Band. A fantastical journey flying above the desert where you build your domain. Build housing, gather food, satisfy needs, and grow your tribe as you maintain lift, discover resources, and explore the desert for lost technologies. Production chains, trading, and multiple playstyles are also promised. It looks pretty good so far, but full gameplay is still a little unclear. But if it's done well, it could appeal to at least a strong niche audience, as I know not everyone likes these kind of thematic city builders. This could build up to something unique, but it could also lack the power to lift itself to new heights. We'll have to wait until more development clears the air on whether Airborne Kingdom will be able to stay afloat as it flies to release. Was that too many? Going a little higher, it's Atmos City by Correcture Games. City building with a heavy focus on managing resources, economic systems, and policy implementation. Here too, you are building a city in the sky, but it's got a futuristic setting. Meaning to have a 15 mission campaign mode, a vast range of buildings crossing upper and lower classes, along with industrial and commercial, and a retro mode where you can build more traditional cities on the ground. It all sounds decent, though might be lacking a bit in terms of personality and aesthetic. It released into early access mid-2019, but didn't get all that much attention. It does look better now compared to a year ago, most likely owing to the multiple updates a month it gets, which is nice. But overall, it seems unrefined and needing a lot of work. It might be able to hit its goals by the intended full release, which is set for 2020, but it's hard to know if Atmos City will be able to make it. Speaking of floating cities, but on water, we've got Buoyancy by Devs on a Boat. What looked really rough a year ago, this has received some pretty hefty improvements recently, and it's looking a lot better too. Build a floating city in a water world, moving around and surviving against the elements and pirate attacks. 
scavenge for resources, feed your villagers, combat fire and disease, and build up your armaments to become a force to be reckoned with. Overall, it's looking good, but despite the recent improvements, it's still a little rough and unrefined. So it would be nice if the improvements continue at the current pace on the gameplay, content, and visuals. Releasing into early access on Steam in 2019 with a possible 2020 completion date, the few but very positive reviews are encouraging that they'll be able to add the needed content and balancing buoyancy needs. In a similar vein, we have Flotsam by Pajama Llama Games. Floating garbage forms the building blocks of this survival city builder where you'll scavenge what you can to make a home on a water world. It's a post-apocalyptic world, but awfully colorful to contrast it from what we'd normally see after the end of human civilization. You'll be recycling your resources as much as possible, and your floating city can move, sailing around the world in search for anything of interest or use. It entered early access towards the end of 2019, and it's looking to fully release in 2020, but I know more than most how much game devs don't always stick to release dates. Now I know these games aren't really classic city building, but survival has been a common element in the current revival of the genre, so swim on over to Flotsam if it piques your interest, and see if it floats your boat. And then we go urban with Smart City Plan by Ambiera a SimCity-inspired game that has a huge focus on planning and transportation. Place zones, set taxes, and implement smart technologies as you set up roads, trains, trams, buses, subways, and even a hypertube. You'll also be setting policies about resource usage and defining laws. It looks to be a quaint little city builder at first glance, but it could have a ton of depth and complexity behind the simple looks, if they manage to get all those systems running well. It would be nice to have something in the lines of SimCity nowadays, with a slightly different flavor, but it's unclear if this will be able to make it. Planning for an early 2020 release, we should be able to get to creating efficient traffic flows and smart city plan relatively soon. Maintaining the urban status, it's Metropolisim by Halfway Decent Games. This is one that's promising to be deeply complex, taking on administrative tasks, zoning, setting up infrastructure, balancing budgets, and more on your way to a bustling metropolis. There are some big ideas, like 10 million population cities where each individual is simulated, having needs and daily behaviors, but I'm not sure if it's going to work out as well as stated. The low-poly visual style isn't for everyone, but generally the game is looking a lot better compared to last year, with frequent updates showing off more content and visual improvements. There is a tentative goal to enter Steam Early Access in 2020, which according to the roadmap does seem possible if the work is kept up. Final completion would take a bit longer though, but we'll see how Metropolisim plays once it begins public testing. Staying somewhat modern, but a little bit different. It's Workers and Resources Soviet Republic by Three Division. A Soviet-themed city builder tycoon game, construct a republic and turn a poor nation into an industrial superpower by managing resources, creating industrial complexes, building infrastructure, and ordering your citizens around. Having a 60s to 90s era aesthetic, along with economic simulations that will prove to be a challenge adapting to, this looks like a fresh take on city building that could provide a new flavor to the genre. Receiving a very positive reception on Steam, early access is meant to end in 2020 or 2021 latest, which is achievable if they manage to keep up the frequency of updates. If you're waiting for a full experience, check back with Workers and Resources Soviet Republic in a year and see how it's doing. Bringing back the end of the world, it's Atomic Society by Far Road Games. Build a town and survive in a nuclear wasteland in what's kind of like a Fallout city builder. You decide on the laws and policies of your town as you try to grow it into what sometimes can seem like an ethical nightmare. When I played it, it felt a little bare bones in terms of content and maybe lacking somewhat in personality, but generally gameplay was still solid. It just needs more time to add more stuff, really. But if they keep adding things, then this could flesh out to be something pretty captivating. It's been in early access since late 2018, and after a year it has mostly positive reviews on Steam, though it has to be said that the goal was to finish within 12 months and they still haven't. Maybe they'll be able to pick up the pace and we get a full release of Atomic Society in 2020. 
In a very similar style, we have Surviving the Aftermath by Ice Flake Studios. Paradox is building on the success of Surviving Mars, and this is kind of a sequel that brings your city slash colony base building survival to the new setting of the end of the world. Build your ultimate disaster proof colony, keep your people alive, and restore civilization to a ruined world. There will be multiple biomes with various resources, bandits, and natural disasters to survive, where you'll be training specialists, exploring the wastes, and adapting to changing situations. There's also a plan to have mods, so players could change things up further down the line. It is, however, doing an Epic Store Early Access, which, come on, it's just a timed exclusive, really, which could be something that puts you off. Either way, this apocalypse is due late 2020, when we should be able to experience surviving the aftermath more readily. Considering the apocalypse might mean we have to leave the planet, it's Seed by Clang Games. Revealed a couple years ago, this is a game that's a little hard to pin down in terms of exactly what it is. Conceptually, it sounds amazing, an MMO city builder where you collaborate with other players to explore, harvest resources, and settle new lands on an exoplanet that has biomes, seasons, weather, and a simulated ecology. Your citizens, or seeds, are individually simulated and form relationships and hierarchies, along with needs and wants. Development looks really active, with numerous Q&As and dev updates happening frequently and regularly, but not much actual gameplay has been shown off recently. A pre-alpha should be on the way soon, so hopefully we'll be able to see more clearly what Seed actually is in 2020. Staying up on other planets, we have Before We Leave by Balancing Monkey Games. Welcome to your own little cozy corner of the universe. Starting from scratch, you build your way up to rockets and colonize multiple planets, connecting an interplanetary network of resources in this economic city builder. It specifically says non-violent, so there won't be any military or conquering when it comes to taking over other planets. However, there are ancient guardians and disasters that will challenge your expansion. This will be going through a closed alpha first, and then we could expect a beta or early access of some sorts. It seems like it'll be a chill and relaxed experience, which isn't for everyone. But if you like the feel, then head on over to Before We Leave for a closer look. And finally, we've got Industries of Titan by Brace Yourself Games. If you haven't heard of this one, you might be surprised that this is from the same developers of Crypt of the Necrodancer. Though once you hear the amazing music, it might make more sense. Again, mixing genres, this is kind of a cross between a city builder and FTL-style ship-to-ship combat as you vie for power and control of the resources and economics of Saturn's moon, Titan. You'll be building sprawling cities, setting up production lines, developing technologies, designing battleships, and pulling strings with your influence. Combat will be real-time with pause, too. There's a lot more to this than just city building, which could be a fresh change of pace, but might also not satisfy you if you're looking to focus on the building of a city. Planning to release an early access on the Epic Games Store in 2019, and for a full release including Steam in 2020, this is doing that Epic Games Store exclusivity thing, so you'll have to decide whether you want to get into Industries of Titan early or not. Alright, now for a couple bonus games, but if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed your time here, and it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video, and ring that bell, as it really does help keep this channel running. And if you really like me, you can support more directly using the Humble Bundle referral link, perusing my gaming merch store where I design my own products, or checking out the Patreon, all linked down below with the Discord community, Twitch live streams, and social media accounts, where I create even more content like drawings, photos, and written articles. And I just want to mention a couple bonus games here because the developments seem a little bit far off. First of all, there's Ostriv, which I've listed a few times before and it's been in development since 2014, so there's no telling when it'll release. And there's Citybound, which is more of a tech demo right now, but it has a lot of potential with the systems it's building. So I'm excited to see how that develops over the years. And that's 24 plus upcoming city builders that should be releasing through 2020 and some into 2021 depending on their development, which ones are you most interested in? Also here's something I'd like to know, what old city building game would you like to have come back? As a sequel, remaster, or a spiritual successor? I'd love to know. Personally, I want a Caesar 3 remake that modernizes it and maybe add in that province map from Caesar 2. 
Speaking of, if you'd like to see more city building content, check out my impressions games playthroughs from Caesar to Emperor and plenty more city building and strategy content right here on the channel or drop by the other upcoming games list for many more games. All right, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.